Class is now in session. I am Professor Hockey, and today we're discussing Game 41 of the regular season between the San Jose Sharks and the Boston Bruins, in which the Sharks have lost 4-2. to two. So we are officially halfway through the season here for the San Jose Sharks, 41 out of 82 games, and the Sharks have finished that first half with a grand total of 12 wins as well as 32 points on the other side of the standings are the Boston Bruins who have yet even played their 41st game they were playing their 39th here tonight and they now have 31 wins so clearly the delta of the skill level between these two teams was quite massive going into this game here tonight and it was you know expected especially in the second half of a back-to-back that the Sharks would not only lose the game but that they might just get absolutely dominated destroyed outshot like 40 to 18 5 to 1 score just absolutely no hope and while here tonight I don't think there was ever necessarily a moment where you really thought that the Sharks would be able to win this one the fact fact is is that they did kind of hang around with the Bruins did a pretty decent job at keeping this game close and put up a decent fight had some solid shifts in general so while they would indeed lose 4 to 2 this wasn't necessarily the most depressing game that you may have thought coming into this one considering the Bruins had a 34 and 4 record going into tonight's game now this one started off well not very well it did seem as though that this one was going to indeed be just an absolute steamroll early on as the Bruins would take a 1-0 then 2-0 lead the Marchand goal would come just about a minute into the game then Smith would add it a few minutes later however the Sharks would get one back from Logan Couture and so they would only be trailing by one goal at the end of the first period now unlike in the previous game against the Ducks where the Sharks had their best period in the first and then it kind of trailed off off a bit the Sharks worst period was actually in the first period they kind of didn't get to do much of anything that a couple of okay uh, actually pretty decent chances in that first period but it was definitely a sort of David versus Goliath type of situation where the Bruins were really just they managed to score those couple of goals pretty much out of nowhere and the Sharks really only got to play here and there with a couple of chances nice to seek it to a score but they were down by one pretty handedly in the second period however things began to even out a bit the Sharks actually got a couple of power plays for themselves one of them was after a set of extremely effective shifts in the offensive zone for the San Jose Sharks this came just about halfway through the second period maybe slightly before that the Sharks get in with their first line they change to their second line still rolling in the offensive zone they change to their fourth line still rolling in the offensive zone the Bruins are forced to ice the puck a couple of times and then a very interesting play happens so they ice the puck then the Bruins line up for the face off but it turns Turns out the two defensemen that they had on the ice, Clifton and Forbert, who and these two players had played like four minute shifts at this point. That's just how dominant the Sharks were during this stretch of play. One of them, Forbert, I believe, actually ended up going to the bench and the Bruins send over a different defenseman. So after the linesman noticed that, they got called for a delay of game penalty, which did, of course, allow the Bruins to change up their personnel because it was no longer an icing situation. And so that did begin to beg the question, was this an intentional play from the Bruins? Because the fact is, is that there are very, very few teams who have a better penalty kill than the San Jose Sharks coming in. The Bruins is the that team they were first in the league and the Sharks got a taste of their own medicine basically on the pen on the power play type of situation because the Bruins really did shut them down I believe the Sharks had four power plays in this game they went zero for four they did get a couple of good chances on those last couple of power plays but the first two and counting this one that was potentially intentional from the Bruins were just absolutely nothing happening the Bruins just shut it down completely and the Sharks looked lost and so they went from multiple strong 5v5 uh, five on five shifts strung together to then a weak five on four shift so it's definitely an interesting question to ask whether or not they intentionally take this penalty to switch up the personnel get some fresh people on because they don't believe that the Sharks power play would be able to score against them and if it was indeed intentional the gamble did end up paying off but eventually the Sharks would indeed tie this game up from a Ferraro goal to make it 2-2 but unfortunately the Bruins would get a power play for themselves and Pasternak would make them pay pretty quickly and so it would be a 3-2 lead for the Bruins heading into the third period uh, 
they would retain the one goal lead at the end of 40 minutes. In the third, the Sharks actually had some decent chances. They were getting some good shots on net. It kind of reminded me a bit of the third period between the Sharks and the Ducks just yesterday, where it was one where the Bruins were definitely not upset with how the game were going because they weren't giving the Sharks a ton of space, but it was clear that the Sharks were controlling the puck more than the Bruins, but it would still yet again be a Pasternak goal that would make it 4-2 for Boston and put the Sharks in a two-goal hole that they just couldn't really break out of. And unfortunately, even with the goaltender pulled, they had a couple of decent chances. They just wouldn't be able to score. And most importantly here... Eric Carlson would not keep up his assist and point streak. He did not assist or score any of the two Sharks goals here tonight. So it comes to an end and it came very, very close to continuing in the literal last second of the third period. Carlson, a great pass to Logan Couture who tries to tip this one in. I am honestly not even sure if it would have counted had it actually gone in because time may have indeed run out, but it was a very nice save by Allmark anyway. And so the streak came to an end. On to the players to talk about here, we have the first line of Meyer, Hurdle, and the Bank coming off of an incredibly impressive game against the Anaheim Ducks. It was pretty obvious that that wasn't going to be able to continue going into this one. Not only are the Bruins the best team in the league, but they also have, you know, one of the best sort of uh, defensive units in the entire league as well. I mean, Patrice Bergeron is one of the best defensive forwards of all time, not just currently in the league. They've got players like McAvoy and Lindholm and all these players back there. So generally, it was going to be a tougher game for the first line. And I think in the first period, they definitely struggled to adapt to what the Bruins were throwing at them. This was probably the least effective line for the San Jose Sharks in that opening frame. But as the game went on, things seemed to open up a bit more for them. I thought Meyer definitely picked it up from the second period onward LeBanc looked okay as well and so it ended up being a decent line for the San Jose Sharks but not insanely effective the line that was quite good for San Jose was their second line of Nieto Couture and Barabanov and two players who I want to highlight particularly on this line the first being Logan Couture I thought he was really rolling here tonight seemed to have really gotten up for the increased competition here coming up against the indeed league's best team he scores that goal he comes very very close to scoring that line last one in the last couple of seconds had a couple of other very good chances so a solid game for the captain here tonight and I also do want to commend Matt Nieto who I thought was actually rather effective on the offensive side of things Nieto has really been a big surprise for me thus far this season I definitely did not agree originally when he was put onto the second line it felt as though that the Sharks were just kind of throwing things at the wall and hoping that something would stick and it feel, felt as though that this was essentially trying to plug the hole on a sinking ship with a band-aid but I will admit that it has worked out better than expected and for longer than expected so credit and kudos do need to go towards Matt Nieto who hasn't necessarily been the most effective on that second line every single game but he has consistently been average enough to put off some you know solid games here or there. When it comes to the third, the third line, probably the lowest event line of the game here tonight for the San Jose Sharks, there was like this one decent backdoor attempt by Nick Benino earlier on in the game, but otherwise there wasn't necessarily a ton doing. Sveshnikov was probably the, the most invisible player on the ice for the San Jose Sharks throughout this entire game, at least forward-wise, and so generally the third line, not necessarily much to write home about. When it comes to the fourth line, this line was actually relatively impressive for the Sharks I thought had a couple of very solid shifts I usually talk a lot about Lorenz and recently I felt as though Lindblom's game has picked up which you know is kind of diff you know it's not that difficult to have had happen because Lindblom's game was pretty much non-existent for like the first 30 games of this regular season but here tonight I actually want to talk a bit about Gadjevich, who has always kind of been the sort of black sheep on this fourth line because while Lorenz does seem to have a bit of offensive upside and of course we do know Lindblom historically does have an offensive upside to him even though we really haven't seen much of that thus far this season Gadjevic has been kind of the player who's more so the sort of enforcer type of role who you're not really expecting to put up even like five points an entire season you know, right it would be like a five point would be kind of an accomplishment for him but I thought he actually had a very effective game here tonight for the San Jose Sharks set up a couple of decent chances and while this fourth line did not contribute like they did in the previous game against the Anaheim Ducks I I'd actually go on to say that they had a better game than they did against Anaheim, even with that lack of goal. 
When it comes to the back end here for the San Jose Sharks, once again, the first def defensive pairing here led the way for San Jose. Eric Carlson, a very, very strong game, kind of reminded me of yesterday's against the Anaheim Ducks, where uh, actually I thought he was even better here tonight than against Anaheim. He really was trying, especially near the end of the game, to get that point, to try and keep that point streak going. It just nothing really seemed to be. The Ducks are, are the, the Bruins are obviously a much better defensive team than the Anaheim Ducks, so there isn't as much space on the ice to work with and yet Carlson still managed to find multiple solid seam passes that just couldn't get buried by the Sharks shooter so a very good game for Carlson who I also thought was pretty good on the defensive end as well the major problem was with the other set of pairings for the San Jose Sharks and in particular their bottom pairing I thought Harrington was quite bad here tonight and Ferraro was just an absolute disaster a couple of these goals were like directly Ferraro responsible uh, on the second Pasternak goal Ferraro just completely loses his man Pasternak who then is just able to just literally sit at the right side of James Reimer and just sort of wait there for the puck to come to him because Ferraro is cut is caught puck watching then there is the Marchand goal where Ferraro steps up in the neutral zone and Marchand is able to just get right around him which is not a good thing and this is what really kind of sets the tone early on in this game that the Sharks wouldn't have a chance here as they fall behind 1-0 early on so really rough game for Ferraro honestly generally quite the rough season for Mario Ferraro he's never really lived up to that hype that he had a couple of years ago when he had that season on that top pairing with Brent Burns so you know his stock has definitely been falling as of late and then finally when it comes to the goaltenders we have James Reimer here gets the start no surprise there here in the second half of a back-to-back hack and then did not have a particularly solid performance against the Anaheim Ducks Reimer here I thought was pretty good against the Bruins for sure uh, a couple of these he really had no chance on for instance the second Pasternak goal the first Pasternak goal was a really good shot that I won't necessarily fault Reimer on too much but he technically could have had this Marshawn one even though this was a bit of a tricky backhand and he probably could have had the Craig Smith one as well so an average-ish game I guess you could say for James Reimer but that will do it for this review the Sharks will be back in action on Tuesday where they will take on the Arizona Coyotes in Arizona I believe this will be the first game for the Sharks in Arizona this season and of course the big talk of the league I guess is that the Coyotes are of course playing in a different arena than usual their arena is gone in uh, Glendale or Scottsdale or wherever it was before and they're now playing in a college rink that seats only a maximum of 5,000 people so that was kind of a the butt of many jokes during this past offseason but it seems so the atmosphere that you that has been brought in this sort of more closed quarter type of game has actually been pretty interesting and the Coyotes have you know obviously not been good this season but they've been better than expected and maybe that has some reason to do with it so we'll see what the Shark can do in Mullet Arena. Class dismissed.